Hey, how are you? Welcome on my channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. In the following video I will talk about the lifeboats that are on board the vessel. If it's either a tanker or a balker, no matter what vessel you will see around the world or you are preparing to join one, you will find at least one type of the lifeboat that I will be talking about in the upcoming video. After reviewing this short clip, I thought it's a good idea to have small bits of input here and there about things that I forgot to mention at the time of the recording. I hope this way my information will be clear as crystal. Even so, please feel free to add your input in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, please like, follow and subscribe. Maybe you want to share this video. First of all, before entering the lifeboat, you have to check the atmosphere with a special device called gas detection device. Like this. Or a portable version of this, which is smaller in size. In any normal situation, the device has to indicate 20.9% oxygen without detecting any other gases. There are three types of lifeboats that you can find on board the vessels. First one is a speedboat, open type, without a roof, like the one in this image here. But because of the new SOLAS regulation, they are not allowed on board anymore. Although, you can still find them on board some old vessels. The second type of lifeboat is a closed type, which is launched in the water by a David's winch, so it takes a while. It is also possible to launch it by its emergency lever, but since it's built from fiberglass, you have to bring it for at least 2 meters above the water, or else you risk if you launch it from a higher place to crack it. The last type is the freefall type. This type of lifeboat is the same as the above, it's a closed type. The difference is that the launching mechanism is by gravity, so the means to escape the vessel in case of imminent danger is much faster. Also, this type of lifeboat has a special design. And because of that, when you launch it in the water, it will resurface very quickly. The only problem with this type of lifeboat is that it's mandatory to use the safety belt on your chest and also the safety belt on your forehead because the shock that your body will get whenever you launch this lifeboat in the water is so great that you risk of breaking your neck. So be very careful if you are using this type of lifeboat if you are either on board a vessel or in a training facility. The third officer is the one who is in charge of monthly checks in the lifeboat to see if the food and water are still okay to be consumed by the crew in case of an emergency. If the lifeboat has a problem with the steering while you are already in the water, there is an option to use the steering directly so to speak by guiding the rudder manually from inside the lifeboat. Everything that I will be showing you in the clip, like the battery on board the lifeboat, the lights, the air bottles, have to be checked weekly by the electrical officer. That is me. Sometimes, on my weekly rounds at the lifeboat, the third engineer will come with me to check the fuel tank or the lubricating oil level and other things like that. Each lifeboat has two groups of battery. Each battery has 12 volts DC and is charged by a step-down transformer connected to the emergency switchboard. It is my weekly duty to check that these batteries are properly charged and are ready to use in case of an emergency. To start the lifeboat, you have to select one of the batteries or both. Whenever we have inspections, we use both to be sure that there are no issues. The batteries are completely sealed from the outside. But even so, you have to check once in a while that there are no cracks or leaks and no toxic gases are released in the atmosphere of the lifeboat. Since the ship is not a house and is not always standing still, 
That is why the batteries and everything else has to be properly secured. In case we get in a storm or choppy weather. Especially whenever you are in the Atlantic Ocean in the winter. Because the weather is very bad there. There are two main types of battery that are used on board the ship. The first type is the lead acid battery, which is very heavy and takes a lot of space and it's made of a series of cells. The only thing good about this battery is that it's cheap. The second type of battery that you will find on board are the alkaline type. These batteries are more reliable, take less space and have a longer lifespan but they are very expensive, so you will see less of them on board the ship. So to start the lifeboat, you just need to connect one of the battery groups and then start the engine, just like a car. Here you can see the emergency steering like I said before. You use this in case you have problem with the steering wheel. From this lever, you accelerate the lifeboat. There is a lock under this. This is the charger that I was telling you about for the batteries. Whenever you have to test the lifeboat for the weekly checks or for an inspection, you have to disconnect it from the lifeboat to avoid any damage to the transformer. And those confined spaces are ratios, food and water, some flashlights, and everything you need to have to survive on board the lifeboat in case you need to abandon the vessel. And you have to survive for a few days until someone can find you and rescue you. From this panel you control the lights on board the lifeboat. Over there are located the air bottles. I have already checked the pressure for this week. It has to be around 230 bars. More instructions about the use of air bottles are posted on the lifeboat's walls for your convenience. In case of an emergency and you don't have time to use the David winch, like I said before, you can use the emergency lever to release the lifeboat faster away from the vessel. This switch here is for the sprinkler system. The purpose is to protect the lifeboat's body from the heat or any burning fire from the vessel that you are escaping from. It is using seawater, so there will never be an issue of running out of water. Since we are talking about seawater, I forgot to mention that the lifeboat's engine is also using seawater to cool itself down. So that is the reason that whenever we test the lifeboat while it is still on board the vessel, we don't use it for more than 5 or 10 minutes. Running the engine without cooling risks of damaging it beyond repair. We only use it for 20-30 minutes if some inspector demands it, but this should not be a habit because of the high risk of damaging the lifeboat's engine. The lifeboat has 24 seats and each seat has designated seat belts for each crew member. Each vessel has two lifeboats built into it. If there is a case of abandoned ship, you only need one of them. The reason there are two is because maybe you cannot get to the one which was designated for your rank. So you will have to get to the other one in order to escape the vessel to safety. Wait, wait, wait. Did you enjoy the clip? Hit that like button. Maybe you want to subscribe to the channel. I will have new videos every week just for you.